Today, let's take a look at some of the scariest found footage of Ed and Lorraine Warren. Viewer discretion is advised. Starting off this countdown, we have the haunted house. In this clip, the Warrens talk about a haunted house that they visited and the creepy things they encountered while they were there. According to them, someone in the house used an Ouija board and it opened up a bunch of doors to the spirit world. And that's how it got haunted. There had been doors open through Ouija that's boards. That's what I was wondering. But unlike most times, we do not condone the use of Ouija boards. We know that people fooling with Ouija boards open doors that can never be closed. Well. Guess who was using that Ouija board? Then there was a boy, and the boy was eight years old. Now that girl was coming over to care for that boy, and he was in like a, I don't know what you'd call it, it's a canning area now, like a canning closet. Like a coal cellar. Oh, like a coal well, cellar. Up. And the boy had communicated on the Ouija board with them regarding what he witnessed. So the young boy and his babysitter were using the Ouija board in the cold cellar and let some spirits into their home. So apparently back in the day, three women used to live in that house and their mother. While they were living there, they were actually haunted by a ghost that was killed in their home back in the day. They would see apparitions of this young girl smiling. And at first the mom would just see the ghost, but then all the other women started seeing the ghost as well. And in one case, she actually spoke to her. I believe there was a conversation between mm -hmm. them. There was a conversation between the two of them, and then this dark form, who we believe to be the person who had perpetrated oh, man. it, of this man, and the girl ran and hid. That's when they learned that the house was actually haunted by a little girl that was killed there and her murderer. The Ouija board had opened up the door to the spirit realm and those spirits had actually come back into the house and are haunting it. Here is an image that the Warrens took while they were on the property. Well, that's the electromagnetic energy that a spirit will gather to manifest itself. And what it's creating here is what we call a psychic light rod. The ghost also manifested itself into orbs as well. Moving on to number nine, we have the Amityville haunting. Now, this is probably the most controversial paranormal case of all time. On November 13th of 1974, Robert Butch Defoe took the lives of his parents and his two brothers and two sisters. The house was then put up for sale and the Lutz family moved in. And apparently the demon that got Butch to do the horrific deeds started to attack their family as well. The doors would open and close by themselves, green slime would ooze from their walls, and one time a demonic face with red glowing eyes was seen looking into their house. So on and so on. You've probably heard of this house. The Warrens went to investigate and confirm that the house was haunted. And now I'm pretty sure you've seen this viral photo of what appears to be a ghost boy peering out of the corner. Well, here's what the Warrens had to say about this photo. It's in the upstairs bedrooms, just to the left there, you see what looks like a small boy's face looking out with bioluminescent eyes. This was the room of one of the young boys who was murdered there. Isn't that eerie? Now, a lot of people would say, well, is that the spirit of the young boy? No, it is not the spirit of the young boy but is a diabolical spirit. That photo had always given me the creeps and I didn't know it was an evil spirit. I thought it was like an innocent ghost boy. You think that is an evil spirit, Ed? Positively. Everything about this house was evil. Again, this case is controversial because a lot of people think that the family just made up the haunting to get rich and the Warrens went along with it. But I don't know, man, I don't know. In at number eight, we have the ghost in the cathedral. This is apparently another real life ghost that the Warrens managed to capture on camera. If you look at this slide now, I want you to see, no, no don't no, point it no, out no. to them. Don't do that. Let them see where the man is. There's a yeah. man, he's right there in that picture. Here's a close up if you didn't manage to spot it. Go to the next one. There, there he is. is. See right in the oh. corner and you see him and that's in a cathedral. I clearly saw a man in a suit. Hopefully y'all saw it too. Let me know. Smash that like button if you did. So according to the Warrens, tragedy took place in the church and now a number of spirits haunt the church. They didn't go into great detail, but back in the day, people actually got burned alive in that church for being part of different Scottish clans and now their souls haunt it. But in that church about 200 years ago, there was over 100 people burnt to death. They were all herded in there like cattle and burnt to death. Moving on to number seven, we have the family in Connecticut. So basically, Ed and Lorraine Warren went to Connecticut to help a family that was being severely haunted. What I'm about to show you is real footage from this case. Basically, it starts with Ed and Lorraine sitting at a table praying with the family, and then Ed tries to make contact with whatever is haunting their house. One knock for yes, two for no. Are you a man? 
Are you a boy? You want the people in this house to move? One knock for yes, two for no. Yes. Okay. Using the one knock for yes and two knock for no method, Ed was actually able to find out more about this ghost that was haunting them. So the ghost was haunting their home and causing a scene because it didn't like the family's mother. Who is it that you don't like the most here? Is it Is it their father? Is it their mother? Oh my god. Ooh. Okay. Isn't that creepy? But also, it's not the only ghostly thing that they caught on camera. Later on, Ed asks the ghost to give them a sign, and the kitchen chair moves back on its own. Give me some sign. Is that you moving something? Give me some sign that you're here. In at number six, we have Annabelle the doll, which she gives me the heebie-jeebies, people. In this next interview with Ed and Lorraine Warren, they talk all about Annabelle the doll. One of the most famous would be Annabelle. Mm -hmm. This is a Raggedy Ann doll that's made like thousands of other dolls, except that this doll was used in communication, almost like having a seance. Mm -hmm. So story goes that a young nurse received the doll as a gift from her mother. She lived with a fellow nurse. The two worked together and they also lived together. Well, one morning the nurse brought the doll down and put it at the kitchen table to have breakfast with. It was meant as a joke. She's like, ah, ha ha, look, this doll is having breakfast with us. But the next day she did the exact same thing. She brought the doll down and she sat it down for breakfast. The next day she did the exact same thing and it kept happening. And then something even more terrifying happened. But the third morning, they're talking to the doll and the arms of the doll are on the chair like this. Suddenly they went up and onto the table. Now this didn't frighten them. And that was their first mistake. So they did end up taking it to a medium and the medium informed them that the spirit of a six year old girl who had died in a car accident on the road by their house was latched onto the doll. They did some research and they did find out that a little girl named Annabelle had died on the road in a car crash right by their house. But listen to what Ed says here. There was a six year old child by the name of Annabelle who was killed, but God does not allow the spirit of a child to go into a doll. This was a demon who was posing as that little child to create sympathy to these two young women. It worked and this demon tricked the girls. They ended up looking after this doll thinking it was Annabelle the little girl. They would take it out on excursions, buy it clothes, jewelry, and then it started to attack the girls. The scariest thing happened when the two nurses came back from their shift one night. They leave the doll in the bedroom. They'd come home after midnight Put the key in the door, unlock the door, and who do you think is standing there? The Raggedy Ann doll. Standing there. Hearing Ed say that literally sent shivers down my spine. Just imagine coming home and seeing that doll standing there perfectly upright. Mm. The doll later on went to attack one of the nurse's boyfriends by choking him out in his sleep. Finally, Ed and Lorraine Warren got involved and ended up taking the doll from them and locking it away in a museum. So yes, Annabelle is real and terrifying. Next up we have the Warren's Museum. The Warren's Museum is filled with cursed and deadly objects that literally if you touch them or do something wrong they could possess you or kill you. And in this video you'll see just how terrifying their museum truly is. Let's take a look at the shadow doll or the doll of shadows. There are many uh, what we call death dolls here. The doll you see here was made through black magic rituals. It's called doll of shadows. This doll is absolutely terrifying. Like if you thought Annabelle was bad, this doll is 10 times worse. It has uh, human bones here and there and animal uh, parts all over the body. So yes, the doll is composed of human bones and hair and teeth. The owner was using it for dark rituals and in the end the doll became possessed by a very powerful and malevolent demon. In fact, the way in which this doll was used is absolutely horrifying. They take a picture of this doll, they send it to you and they put the curse on the back. You take it and you look at it and you laugh at it, but it's not a laughing matter. Because once you see the image of the doll, it can be projected telepathically to you in your dream state. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? That is terrifying. But that's not all. Apparently this doll killed a number of people in their sleep. Uh, images of these dolls can be so frightening that they've actually stopped people's hearts during the dream state. Ed then goes on to talk about how this doll ended up getting possessed in the first place. So a couple ended up getting it for sale at an antique shop. The antique dealer practically gave it to them. They're like, take it from me. 
That's a red flag. Then they started having horrifying nightmares. Then they found out that the nightmares they were having were the exact same. And then one night, the husband woke up and had huge gash marks on his back. The scariest part is that the doll can never be destroyed. You see, you must be very careful with a doll like this. You can never destroy it. If you destroy it, you could have things occur to you that would be horrible. Because the spirits that are within the doll are and in our last spot today, we have the real life vampires. According to Ed and Lorraine Warren, vampires are real, but they aren't like typical vampires that you see in movies, like I want to suck your blood and they wear like a cape and stuff. No, no. Are there such a thing as vampires and can you tell me an example of one? Positively, uh, vampires do exist, what we call human vampires. They talk about two different types of vampires that are out there. The first being someone that hallucinates and imagines themselves as a vampire and takes on that role. The other is demonstrated by the Albany case from 1953. Back in 1953, in Old Greenwich Farm Cemetery, where the Calvani family had to open up a grave, mm -hmm. and uh, a family member had died, and they were saving a little money by digging the grave themselves. Mm -hmm. When they got down about four foot, they struck a coffin which shouldn't be there. It was their private plot. He goes on to say that the coffin was of an antique nature. They opened it up, and there was a perfectly preserved man in there. And inside was a man about 45 years old, and he was fresh to the touch as though he had just been buried. So even though the plot was there, there's a law that you can't exhume the body until you get a court order. So this process took about a week. And when they got back to the grave site, both the coffin and the body were badly deteriorated. This freaked everyone out. People went wild and they were like, oh my God, it's a vampire, ah! And they were right. According to the Warrens, the man in the coffin was a sorcerer and user of black magic. He had put himself in a catatonic state. He was alive, but just barely. And then at night, he would leave the coffin with his astral body and find his prey. His astral body was being connected to his physical body by something Ed referred to as silver cord. So no matter how far he went, he could still make it back to his body. While the physical body is still alive, there is a silver cord, a supernatural cord, that emanates from the physical body to the astral body. Mm -hmm. No matter how far away the astral body goes, you go 3,000 miles, that cord would still be attached. So somehow that cord got broken, maybe when the woman got the land consecrated. And that's why when they went back to the coffin, the body was gone and there was just bones. Now you're not gonna believe this next part. I don't even know if I do. So this vampire dude didn't arise from his tomb and go around biting people's neck to suck their blood. No, no. And he would go in search of blood, but he would not bite into anybody's neck. He could take the blood through what we call teleportation, apports. So vampires could literally be real and among us. I don't know, okay? I really don't know. All right, folks, that's all for today's video. If you wanna see part two, then let me know in the comments below. And while you're down there, you know the drill. Smash that like button, obviously subscribe to my channel. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan. Stick around for some bloopers, and I'll show you when I show you. Bye. According to them, someone in the house used, used. Oh, whoops. My bad. In this next interview with Ed and Lorraine Warren, they talk all about Animal the doll. Why did I say Animal? Like Hannibal. The scariest thing happened when one... Ugh, oh my god, I talk way too much. Who made it just in time.